What's going on this week in Nerf? Welcome to This Week in Nerf, your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. I'm Adriana, and this week, oh, have we got some news for you. A pretty good mix of community stuff and official stuff. There are leaks. It'll be great. Let's listen. Now, I know you're all already tired of hearing about coronavirus, and no surprise, but a supply chain research unit reported that the toy industry was significantly disrupted by the outbreak. Most of the difficulty that companies are having right now is in obtaining the raw materials. There's a lot of resins and plastics that are only available in China. And in addition to physically getting these raw materials, assembly is also a major issue. You don't have people to put the things together when many people are very, very sick and then many more are affected by quarantines and travel restrictions. So it's just not a great time for the toy industry or really any industry that relies on importing goods from China. It's, uh, and we're feeling it a little bit too with our motors right now. So sorry about that. Um, bad news for the toy industry though, is the production for holiday season typically begins in June. So if we don't see the outbreak slowing down a little bit by then, there will be huge shortages for the holiday season. And so I seriously hope that everything calms down a little bit for that reason, mostly for all of the people affected by the outbreak. Over on Reddit, Uncle Chubb showed us this sweet overkill strife kit that he calls himself the Chubb Rifle, which is, I like that name better than overkill, but I, I understand. Uh, it's got a huge oversized barrel, so all this material in the front won't actually affect how well your darts fly. I love that so much. Too many kits really compress the barrel out the end of it, so it just it, it makes your blaster worse. This one keeps the same, so that's good. Uh, the split rail along the top allows you to still access the jam door, which again, a lot of kits block off the jam door, which is terrible when you actually get a jam. <laughs> There's also a battery stock, which is hinged, super easy to get into. I love the idea of battery stocks. The Strife battery tray is a wee bit too small. Uh, and just, Generally, the look of it is amazing. The flow around the blaster was done so well. It's like slightly cartoony, but also just very cool. I love all of the, the shapes and the stock especially. The stock looks amazing. It'll be sold on France Foam in the very near future, and they're hoping to have some available at End War as well. So I'm super excited to get to see one of these in person. It looks amazing. The Rival Takedown is a super cool blaster, but the grip sucks. Especially, you no, know, even stock. Even stock, the grip sucks. When you prime backwards, your hand just wants to slip right off the back of it. It is terrible. So thankfully, Containment Crew just released a new pump grip. The bulk of it seems about the same, which is a thing that I was worried about with 3D printed grips. So it looks like you should still be able to grab it in a similar way, but that strap, will keep your hand in place. That's a good looking grip and you can get one at containmentcrew.com for $25 for a limited time. I believe the full price is 30. It's a new product, so get it now while it's new and cheaper. Also for the takedown, Foam Technician just released a speed loader and it looks super smooth to use. I just, speed loaders are cool. I don't, I've never actually used one, but they look really cool. They look really easy to use, and I might actually need to pick one of these up. And you can get that on his site for $16 right now on sale. Uh, foamtechnician.com. And now, a huge thank you to Utter Travesty for ignoring his schoolwork and instead looking at distributor websites for the leaks. And boy, did he find the leaks. We'll, we'll start off small, we'll start off a little bit boring, and get to more exciting stuff, so hang on there. Ultra. Ultra 6, Ultra 7. We don't have any more information than just the name. I believe we thought there were only going to be uh, six blasters to start with, so seeing the 7 is actually a little bit interesting. But again, there's nothing else to go off of here, so let's move on to Halo. We got some Halo leaks, and I'm thinking that these are code names, 
similar to the Overwatch ones that use like weird food names like meringue and orange and stuff. Uh, Halo seems to be focused on reptiles. So we have the Halo Chameleon, the Halo Python Motorized, and the Halo Viper. I do not know enough about the Halo universe, and I know a lot of you, my lovely viewers, do. So if you have any guesses as to what these three names could be referring to, I would love to read about it in those comments. And next we have a whole new line. Hyper is a mystery and a surprise. And we've got several blaster names, we've got some ammo stuff, and I am excited to share it with you. Let's get into it. The Hyper Jab 40, the Hyper Slam 60, the Hyper Hail 100, and a Hyper Pump Action. The name Pump Action leads me to believe that the first three were electronic blasters. That makes the most sense in my brain. Uh, there's also the Hyper Mask, which leads me to believe that these are high velocity ammo types similar to Rival um, that also came with masks. Um, the numbers on the blasters, the 40, the 60, the 100, those typically refer to the capacity of the blasters. Uh, it was that way with the Elite line and with the Rival line, even though Rival added a couple of zeros. But I don't think that these zeros are there for style points at all. And this is because the Hyper Refill Canister in the 50 and 100 quantities, this is a really high capacity line. There's also the Hyper Boost Refill Pack. I don't know what that means or how that's different from the refill canister and canister is a weird word to start with. There's been a lot of speculation on what this line actually is. Uh, I definitely think it's a very high capacity uh, line similar to Rival. I wouldn't be surprised if it was an omnidirectional uh, type of thing. Some people have speculated that it's gel balls. Drac thinks that it's going to be half size Rival ammo. Uh, if they do go for half-size rival ammo, I sincerely hope that it's biodegradable, otherwise that's going to be really, really hard to pick up in public parks. So, crossing my fingers, it's not that. Uh, however, it does make sense for Hasbro to move on to a new ammo standard for the rival style rounds. Um, because the Rival line was so successful, the omnidirectional ammo works amazingly, and they're just... I, I understand that they aren't getting the money that they want out of the actual ammo itself now, with Headshot being around, with the Proton Rounds being around, with Dart Zone getting into that space. It's getting very, very crowded, and it makes sense they're trying to make their own new space here. Um, and I just want to say that New ammo isn't inherently bad. I love Mega, I love Vortex, I love Rockets, I love Boomco. Different ammo isn't an inherently bad thing. Bad ammo <laughs> is a bad thing. So I sincerely hope that this ammo type is superior in some way to what we already have on the market and not just a cash grab. And we were so lucky this week that we got not only one new line, but leaks for two new lines. Next up, we have the Elite 2.0 line. These are going to be uh, maybe reimaginings, maybe reskins of existing Elite Blasters. And I'm really interested to see how exactly these turn out. But let's go through the list of blaster names that Utter Travesty found. First up, we have the Elite 2.0 Commander RC6. Uh, this one, I don't have a guess for what blaster it could be based off of. RC6, the only thing that Nerf has done before is the Cobra, but that's the Alpha Strike line, not Elite. That wouldn't make sense to go with this, so we'll just have to wait and see for this one. It's going to be 1890 Euro. Next up is the Elite 2.0 Guardian RD6 for 1599 Euro. I'm thinking RD, maybe rotating drum? Six capacity, hammer shot, question mark, maybe? That makes the most sense to me. Uh, after that, we have the Elite 2.0 Shockwave RD15, and that's coming in at 3190 euro. And if RD does mean rotating drum, 15 is a huge capacity, so I could be entirely wrong about that. 
Uh, I am very interested to see what the shockwave actually turns out to be a reimagining of. This next one, we do have confirmation on the Amazon listing of what the blaster is. The Elite 2.0 Echo CD10 is officially confirmed as a Delta Trooper. And that's coming in at 41.99 euro. Um, and again, I'm not sure how close they will be to the old Elite Blasters, whether it will be the same shape, but different insides, if it'll be the same insides, but with different outsides, who knows? <laughs> And then there's the Elite 2.0 Volt SD1. SD, I'm assuming, stands for single dart. One is typically the capacity. Volt rhymes with jolt. Makes sense to me. Uh, the next one is the Elite 2.0 Trio TD3. I'm thinking TD, triple dart, three, three dart capacity. Trio, again, leading to three. Likely a triad, and that's going to be 7.99 euro. Now, the most exciting one, Elite 2.0 Phoenix CS6. I think that this is likely going to be a strife. The price point is 27.99 euro, and they've gotta have a strife in this line. They just have to. If they're gonna be rebooting the Elite line, why not use your best seller? It, it's it's got to be. I just hope that the insides are similar enough that we can use already existing uh, modding materials. Crossing my fingers there. Uh, the Elite 2.0 Warden DB8. I think that DB is probably double barrel, 8 capacity, guessing it's a rough cut for 29.90 euro. And this last one is also a confirmed uh, blaster on the listing. The Elite 2.0 Turbine CS18 is a rapid strike, and I know everybody loves their, their full auto. I think I'm really excited to see what the Turbine actually looks like, and you can get one of those for 49.99 euro. That's all the blasters that we have. But wait, there's more. Elite 2.0 Refill uh, in a 20 pack, which is four pounds, and an 80 pack, which is 12 pounds. I am... Very curious about the darts specifically. Best case scenario, it's a redesigned dart with a better head that flies straight, flies far, flies well. Worst case scenario, we get a formed molded dart that makes it proprietary similar to the Ultra Ammo and that would make me cry. I want, the Elite line is probably my favorite of the standard blaster lines. I like it better than the Doom Lands. I like it better than the um, Alpha Strike. It could be good, and I hope that the darts help make it good. Please be good. Hasbro, please. And that brings us to the mod of the week, and this week's winner is Veles from Rijar. This is a 3D printed flywheel blaster. It's powered by hurricane wheels. The aesthetics are amazing. It came from some really cool uh, inspiration artwork and he did an excellent job capturing the feel of, of that piece of art. And we've, you know, we've seen fully printed flywheels before. So what's, what's really special about this one? Well, it's the 30 degree mag with a brand new pusher style. Uh, he even showed a video of it firing with it open, opened up so we can see exactly what's going on on the inside. It seems like it does help the dart, the dart straighten out a little bit from that, that curve. A lot of the uh, slanted mag blasters aren't the most accurate, and this seems a smidge better than those. There are still some tweaks to be made, but when the files are ready, he's also planning to open source them. So thank you so much for sharing this blaster with us. Thanks for all of the huge amounts of information you had on it, which will be in the comments. And thank you for sharing the files when you're, when you're done with them. That's amazing. 
And that is all the news for this week. If you prefer to read the news, go to news.phoneblastshop.com for the This Week in Nerf Digest. If you prefer to write the news, you can join the History of Nerf Modding Discord, and we have a channel in there where you can contribute to the show. If you like my face, like the video. And if you think you want to see more of my face, you should subscribe. Ah, <sighs> that outro made me feel like a real live YouTuber. All the links to everything we talked about is in the description, so you should click a click on those. And now the video is over. You can click somewhere else, like the button here. Or it will be there eventually, maybe.